Dude, you just can't compare. What are you talking about? Diesel. It can never be as good as gas. And how do you figure that? Diesel doesn't have as much power as gas, can't be as fast, can't last as long or do as much work without breaking down or being left in the dust. Face it, you just make noise and pollute. It's no comparison. Are you high or are you just some special kind of stupid? Okay, so I think we've all had this happen or at least have seen it happen. We get a couple of gearheads together, one likes gas, the other one likes diesel. You can't help but have the conversation of which is better. Well, that usually ends up turning into one big pissing match. And if you're going to have a debate between the two, you should really start with facts. Or at least compare the two with the facts. But when it's comparing gas and diesel, to me it's like comparing apples and oranges. For example, apples and oranges are both fruit. Diesel and gas are both made from crude oil. To me, that's where the similarities stop. So if we go ahead and take a look at some of the facts about the two, we'll see some more. Diesel's average chemical compound makeup would be carbon-14, hydrogen-3, oxygen-1. Whereas gas's average chemical compound makeup is carbon-9, hydrogen-2, oxygen-1. If we translate this into BTUs, or the average amount of BTUs available per gallon of fuel, gas usually ends up being about 125,000 BTUs. That's pretty good considering it's gas. But if we go ahead and look at diesel, diesel's average BTU rating per gallon of fuel is 147,000 BTU. Considerably higher than gas. Actually, on average, it's 22,000 more. Not bad. Not bad at all. So if you just look at the BTU rating, on average, it's 17.6% more energy that's available in diesel versus gas. So, just by comparing the two up forward, diesel is more energy dense than gas. So, you potentially have more power you can make from diesel versus gas. Diesel 1, gas 0. Okay, that's just comparing the two fuels by themselves. And it's easy to see that diesel is more energy dense than gas. So potentially you can create more power from diesel. Whereas we look beyond just the fuel, let's look at the engines. Now let's, let's compare two mechanical engines and we're talking pre-computers. So let's say that they both have the same displacement and eliminate all the other factors. When looking at the two with the same displacement, mechanical, no computer, a diesel only compresses air, whereas a gasoline engine compresses air and fuel. When you compress air and fuel, you have the possibility of pre-ignition or premature detonation. That can destroy your motor. This isn't possible with a diesel because a diesel is a direct injection. It only compresses air. The fuel is added later. So, this makes diesel more reliable and more efficient. That's two for diesel. When looking at the diesel's direct injection and has no ignition, because it has no ignition from an outside source like a spark plug, there's no real need for a alternator or a battery. Now, if you're uh, using a gas engine and the alternator goes out, once the battery's drained, that engine's done. It, it can fire itself without an outside ignition source. Whereas mechanical diesel doesn't need any battery or any alternator. Once it's warmed up and it's running, it's running. Just keep on adding fuel and air and it'll keep on going. And that's mostly because of the direct injection. When the piston comes up and it heats all that air, it gets so hot that the moment that the fuel goes in, it explodes. No injection needed. 
Therefore, it lasts longer. That's another one for diesel. Okay, so we have the possibility of lasting longer and being more reliable through no ignition. What about being more efficient in the torque area? Well, when we're talking about diesel, diesel has a lot more torque at lower RPMs. And these lower RPMs from a standstill to overcome the inertia from being still and moving that weight down the road is much more efficient because you need that power right off the bat to move. Whereas we look at a gasoline engine with the same displacement, it has to rev up higher to create more torque. Therefore, it's using more fuel and being less efficient to move weight. Another one for diesel. Okay, so now that we've talked about the torque, let's talk about the efficiency when it's running lean. A diesel compared to um, gasoline engines do run more lean because there's not a restriction within your intake like there is on a throttle body on a gasoline motor. Because of that restriction, the air and fuel uh, doesn't really mix as well as a diesel and becomes less efficient. So because it burns more efficiently, you can use your fuel a lot better in the air and fuel ratio. Therefore, diesel gets another mark. Okay, so your engine's running more lean because you don't have the restriction on the throttle body because there is no throttle body on a diesel engine. So what's that translate to when it comes to pollutants? As you saw earlier, the gas gearhead said that it just pollutes. Noise making polluting, so it does. Well, when you actually compare the two between diesel and gas, because it runs more efficiently, it actually produces less carbon monoxide, less hydrocarbons, and less carbon dioxide than the gasoline engine. It runs more efficient, less pollutants. It's another one for diesel. Now don't get me wrong, diesel does still pollute, but we'll get to that here in just a minute. Now, when looking at reliability like we were earlier with the failure of the spark ignition system on a gas, between diesel and gas, diesel engines are typically built a lot stronger than a gas engine. Because of them being built stronger, they last longer. Therefore, the reliability is higher. That's another one for diesel. The reason they're built a lot stronger is because they have to deal with higher compressions. And that higher compression, once again, is more torque. That more torque, more fuel efficiency, using it better for, for the work that's needed. Now, we could go and put another one on that for diesel, but we'll give gas a break here. We already gave one for it in torque earlier. So moving on, when we talk about uh, lasting longer and um, being built better, having more efficiency in the torque area. Diesel motors, whether it be in truck or car, typically hold their value a lot better than a gasoline engine. Let's take Cummins for example. A Cummins, when all the regular maintenance has been done, typically can go 500,000 up to a million miles. And there are a select few that have pushed that million mile mark and kept going. So let's see someone claim that they've done that with a gasoline engine without a rebuild. <laughs> I've never heard of one. I've never heard of a gasoline engine hitting a million mile mark. I, I haven't. Okay, take it back. I believe one Honda did. Just one. But other than that, they hold a better value. They do more work, they're more efficient, they last longer, hold a better value. It's another one for diesel. Okay, so we talked about the two fuels that are commonly used in these engines, diesel and gas. What about alternatives? 
There are a lot of people out there that use the older gas engines and build them up with alcohol and they claim it's better. What about the alternative for diesel guys that use biodiesel, which is made from vegetable oil? If we look at the two, just like before, the biodiesel, just like diesel, is more energy dense than the alcohol side, like gasoline. In fact, if you compare the two with alcohol and biodiesel, biodiesel is typically about 30% more energy dense than alcohol. Alcohol does serve its own benefits, but overall, there's more possibility for power out of biodiesel. It's another one for diesel. Okay. What else can we run now? If you look at the gas side, the big three typical is to run obviously gas, alcohol, and some people do run propane in their gasoline engines. But what about diesel? How diverse is it when it comes to running different fuels in its engine? Well, because of diesel's direct injection and the way that it's built, it has a lot more diversity in fuel that can be burned in the engine. Just about any oily fuel can be burned. And a few gases have successfully been put through the diesel engine, but most of those gassier type um, fuels don't have a lot of lubricity to them. So they're not high on the favorite scales, but can be done. Some of the things that we look at when we look at things that we can run through the diesel engine will be diesel number one, diesel number two, and diesel number four. These are the biggest uh, ones that are ran through it, not even to mention the ULSD, which goes back to our efficiency rating. So there's four types right there, and those are all just types of diesel. Yes, gas has three different types of gas, and probably higher when we talk about octanes, but the typical ones, 87, 90, 93, then you get up into the higher ones, 103, 106, it can get pretty nifty. But if we eliminate those factors of the different types of diesel versus the different types of gasoline, octane rating, and if we look beyond that, we can see that there is the ability to run biodiesel, which we already covered, but we can also run a biodiesel that's made from plastic not just biodiesel made from waste vegetable oil. Okay, so turning waste vegetable oil into biodiesel is one alternative. But if you don't want to go that route, you don't have to. Filter that waste vegetable oil and put it straight into the engine. It'd be a lot better if you heat it up first, but considering you could probably put um, let's say 90, 90 plus degree uh, oil straight into the engine. You could run motor oil, but you would have to clean it and that gets kind of, it gets, it gets a little fucked up, <laughs> just to put it simple. I don't recommend that, but it can be done and I have seen it done, especially when people mix motor oil, clean motor oil with their diesel. Now beyond the biodiesel types, we also have the ability of burning kerosene. We also have the ability of burning home heating oil. Jet fuel types A, A1, and B jet fuel. Military jet fuel, which is different. Types JP4, JP5, JP8 can all be put into a diesel. Okay, but what about the gases like we were saying? We can do natural gas and we can do propane, but they both don't really have the lubricity capability of keeping the cylinders lubricated like you would like in a diesel. So it's better to go with those oily type fuels. So if we looked at the two as two alternatives to put through the engines, I think it's pretty safe to say that diesel won that one too. Okay, if you've been keeping score, you can obviously see that there is a lot of good points for diesel over gas. Now this is starting to look like an ass-kicking ass competition and one of them is a one-legged man. <clears throat> so let's give him a little help here. As we said earlier, diesel does still produce some pollutants 
even though it's not as much as gas. Diesel does produce high nitrogen compounds, also known as NOx, and it also uh, produces uh, particulate matter. So, so really we could give that one to gas because the NOx very deadly and the soot uh, being that diesel has a high sulfur rating kind of makes acid rain not very good for your health so we're going to give that one to gas it does still make a lot of uh, pollutants that contribute to the greenhouse effect and it's more pollutant I mean bottom line but what diesel does produce is kind of deadly. But let's go back to talking about the ULSD diesel, or the common, it's known as the ultra low sulfur diesel. This reduces the amount of the sulfur in the fuel, and it takes away from its ability to make um, extremely acidic rain. Not completely, but it lowers it quite a bit. And if we look at diesel engines today, they're pretty much down to zero. And that's not only with the sulfur that's in the fuel, but it's also creating the NOx and the soot. Most diesels today have, after, um, after exhaust cleaning emissions, and that pretty much takes I'm not going to say all, but close to all of the particulate matter and the NOx out of the exhaust. So once again, when it comes to polluting, gas is a lot worse. But once again, we're just talking about the mechanical engines. Can you put one of these aftermarket systems on the older mechanical engines? Yeah, you can. It reduces some power a little bit and, you know, kind of pain in the ass and be honest, who wants to fucking do that? But it can be done. Therefore, diesel is once again cleaner than gasoline. So, even though we gave gas one, we gotta give diesel one on this. Now there are systems on gas engines to reduce the amount of pollutants it puts out, but compared to the uh, systems that are put on diesels to reduce their emissions, that is no comparison. I mean, we're talking reducing 90, 90 plus percent on the diesel side, whereas putting the catalytic converter on the gas to reduce its emissions, yeah, that's not 90% at all. So, it's still producing a lot of pollutants. Now, we can keep on going on and on and on, but I think that's enough, don't you? We've made a lot of great points, and if you ever come into the altercation that you've seen earlier, now you have some facts that you can back up your statements. Sorry I couldn't help out the gas gearheads any. Yeah, you can still make a lot of power. Gas is still a lot of fun. But when you compare the two, that's not a comparison. That's an ass-kicking competition. So I'll see you guys next time here on Project Commons. Later.